John Delacio here. I know that you enjoyed watching part 1A about the Maxwell House. I call that the Maxwell House. Very, very interesting story. Watch it again and again. Take notes. And let's do our best to handle the persecution we go through when we're being attacked by toxic people on how to handle it. Remember always, vengeance is mine, say it the Lord. Now, for me, I'm an Italian. I'm a born-again believer. I'm actually full-blood Italian, so people think that I'm very passionate, strong, convincing, whatever. So because of my mannerism, people think that you're just a hothead Italian. I am myself surprised on how much grace God has given me many times. Uh, I'm reminiscent still from watching from part one. The stories, what I've seen on the road, and I'll be telling you some of them as we get deep into the teaching here. Well, I've learned a lot traveling on the road, and I want to take that, what I've learned and what God showed me, combined with the scriptures, set the captives free. Because when you are hurt, wounded, attacked by narcissistic people like Jezebel in the Bible and others, it affects you. So when we're going through this, one of the things that I try to do is write up your finances. Be faithful to the work of God. Now, maybe you're watching this on your phone or your laptop through your flash drive, or maybe in a church setting, in a leadership setting, and uh, take the truths, apply it to your life, and let's continue to grow in the things of God. But as we're doing this and you're attacked, it's very easy, at least to me, to get upset, to get angry, because I hate injustice. Now, usually, when it has to do with myself, I have a lot, I have a lot of patience, but I can be very long-suffering. But when I see somebody I love being attacked, the church being attacked, the pastor being attacked, you know, family being, friends can be up there. When I see an injustice, my Holy Ghost, Italian blood begins to boil, and it's very easy if you're not careful to handle it wrong. Well, by the grace of God, I'm still here because I've done my best to have mercy because I sure know I need it. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So when I see somebody who's a narcissistic, I just can't figure them out. I just. But when I see somebody who is nasty because of a personality, and when I see when they're hurting people, I don't want I don't want my friends to get hurt. But with me, I ask God, all right, what can I learn from this? I gotta be patient. I could mess up the whole plan that you have that I don't even know what it is yet. So I'm gonna do my best to show mercy. I had a person who I was helping, a preacher friend, was helping him quite a bit and I had to do something very difficult to help him. And he said this to me, you know, John, I don't think I would do this for you. And I thought to myself, why would you say something so silly like that? Why, why would you even tell me, just don't do it. Why would you say that for salt on the wind? And I would like to just really tell him how I felt. But I bit my tongue, I let him off the hook, and I said, well, probably because God didn't ask you to. And he got off the hook. Being right, don't always make you pray. Well, what do we mean when we say Jezebel? or the Jezebel name. You've heard me mention that Jezebel can be a spirit, can be a personality, can be a generational curse. We're gonna talk, it can be a principality or personality. We're gonna talk about these as we get deeper into it, and each one we have to handle a little differently. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter six, 
verse 16. These six things do what the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord amongst the brethren. God hates these things. And people are human, so many times these things manifest in people. Now, turn me, bear with me, we're, we're coming to play. Bear with me to Galatians chapter 5. We kind of like to know, when it helps us when we're dealing with the situation to know what are we dealing with, who are we dealing with. It, it was something I, I knew in the military. You had to know your enemy. You had to know the enemy. You really needed to know the enemy. I used to race horses with a little sulky. I had to know my competition. I don't know who, what the other horses could do, or what the other drivers can do, what they were willing to do, or what they weren't willing to do. So when I heard a horse coming on the outside, Without turning around, I had to know what horse that was and who the driver was. So I knew what my next move would be. So when we're dealing with an attack from a toxic person, what's the deal? Hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. So a lot of times I might say, you know, I have to understand they're hurting. So we're, we're, we're give them some time to heal, we'll be compassionate. And many times we have to say, they need a strong word, we're gonna warn them. And now we have to give them some time, some space to reflect and to repent. But through it all, we got to watch how we react to the reaction. How do we handle it? Because if we handle it on Christ-like, we are going to make the situation worse. It might be you deserve that promotion, but right now you're not getting it. That's when we have to put our trust in God and say, I believe I'd be good at that job. I believe you want me to have it, God. I would like to have that job, but they're giving it to somebody else for the wrong reason, or they're related to them or something else, or they're, they're, they got to play the organ because they're Father bought the organ, I should be there. We have to be patient and let God be God and his enemies be scattered. When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. So if we wait on the Lord, God will renew our strength. And what God promised you, it may not happen there. It might not happen where you thought, when you thought, how you thought, who or who with you thought, though it tarry, it shall surely come to pass. Maybe in a different setting, a different town, different church, different job, different family. Well, God promised you something. He knows the beginning from the end. What we're going through when we get attacked like that, it's, it's, it'll take us by surprise or blindside you. But it didn't blindside God. God knew it before it happened, and if we put our trust in him, we can get promoted and a lot quickly on how we handle it. So before I was a senior pastor, beginning in 88, prior to that, I was associate pastor for a large ministry, including the counseling appointment. And with the counseling, now you might not be ready for this, we prayed deliverance for people many times. And in this process, I learned that this Jezebel thing can be a spirit. And the way I knew it was a spirit is because God would give me, I'll call it a little picture. I saw a particular, 
I almost want to call her Jezebel Logo. I saw that thing, oh, I'm dealing with a spirit. And knowing that I was dealing with a spirit, I know how to pray and I know how to protect myself. That person's got a controlling Jezebel spirit. How do I want to deal with this? Do they want to get free? Are they ready to get free? Can we set them free? But I mean, how am I going to protect myself? Or is it just a person with a unchristlike personality? And I want to tell you, with firsthand knowledge and praying for people like that, and many times it was very hard to discern if it was the flesh or if it was a spirit. And let me tell you what I found about that. You cannot cast out the flesh. You can cast out a spirit. You can break a curse. But the flesh has to be crucified. The way you crucify the flesh is you starve it. Don't feed it. But let's look at some here. In Galatians chapter 5, Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, vengeance, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, on and on and on. But these same things can also be a spirit. Because when a person constantly has that anger, has that jealousy, operates in witchcraft, it's opening the door for spirits to attack. Now we have to pray for deliverance. We have to protect ourselves from the spirit. Maybe they don't want deliverance. And they have to crucify the flesh. I have to be careful how I'm handling it while they're mistreating me or mine. Well, the good news is the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they are mighty to God and the pulling down of strongholds. So if I see, it's just, you know, look, well, somebody's wondering how did I get the spirit thing. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Again, I said this on part 1a. Maybe you don't believe the gifts of the Spirit offered today. Maybe you believe that was in the book of Acts. Maybe you don't believe that God heals today. I do. It's too late to tell me, don't. No, God healed me. God has delivered me. And we've prayed for many others and we've seen it in operation. So a word of knowledge. Uh, well, let's look at the gifts of the Spirit first. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. These are some of the gifts of the Spirit. They're in the New Testament. They're available to us today. And let's look at them. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, to every man, to every man or woman, to profit with all. To one is given by the same Spirit word of wisdom, to another word, word of knowledge. And it goes on. We're not teaching on the gifts of the Spirit today. I went a little long on the last video. I don't want to go that long this time. But let me tell you what I believe I've learned about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Many times it can manifest like a pigeon. That's talked about in the book of Hosea where God talks to his prophets and vision stream similitude. It could be in like maybe a form of a little similitude. But I'll give you an example. In my opinion, word of knowledge when God shows you something that is a gift of the now there's man's knowledge the world's knowledge and then there's the gift of word of knowledge there's man's wisdom God's wisdom the world's wisdom and the gift of word of wisdom that is different that's different we don't have time to get into that now but Wisdom is different than the gift of word of wisdom. Word of wisdom, if God shows you a word of wisdom, it usually has something to do 
with the present or the future. Word of knowledge usually has to do with the present or the past. I'll give you a couple examples. And again, if you don't understand this, if you don't, don't let it hinder you from getting the blessings of the rest of the teaching. I was praying for a man, and while I was praying for him, he had another counselor in the room. But he did not understand the gifts of the Spirit here. And so he was fighting me the whole time, and he was counseling this guy, let's go back to the womb, and uh, did something happen with your mother, and how was your relationship with your father, and he's going back, 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 back. And in the meantime, while he was doing that, God was showing me the root of the problem. I saw a vision, a similitude, of the man wearing hunting gear, and he was standing there, and he had a shotgun rifle in his arm. He had hunting gear on, it was obvious he was hunting, and he had a, and he had a shotgun in his arm. So I just stopped the session, and I said to him, tell me what happened on the hunting trip. Shocked both of the men, and the problem he was facing today was a result of something that happened on a hunting trip. That was a word of knowledge. Something that happened in the past that was creating his present future. The word of wisdom is, let's deal with this and go on to the future. A similar situation was a guy that had a tremendous anger problem, really bad, short views, fly off the handle, anger problem. He was actually dangerous. And in praying for him, I saw him in a submarine. And I said to him, tell me what happened in the submarine. He took him back. I never knew he was even in the Navy. He had a bad experience in the submarine, and it was the root of the problem. So once we got the root of the problem, we could put the ax to the root. And the man got free. So when we're dealing with a spirit, I just brought that to our attention to tell us that God can speak to us like this in the gift of word of knowledge. So sometimes when it's a spirit that's affecting a human being, God shows me something. I call it a discerning of spirits or a word of knowledge. God showing me that they need uh, deliverance, but they have one deliverance. Or it could be something they're dealing with in the flesh. Now, let me stop here. Refresh myself. Don't trip over that it can be a spirit. I want to tell you the spirit world is real. There's angels and there are demons. Good angels bad angels, all demons are bad, and some are worse than the other. But don't be afraid of it. And don't let this trip on you. Well, do I have that demon? I know they must have that demon. That must. Well, it could be the flesh. It could be the flesh they're dealing with. And if it's a spirit, I want to tell you from experience, sometimes it's hard to discern if it's a spirit or if it's the flesh. But I can tell you this. Acting that way in the flesh can open the door for the spirit realm. So how do we deal with it? Not everybody who needs deliverance from an unclean spirit needs exorcism. They don't necessarily have to go to a deliverance session to get free. All right, we're turning to Psalms 91. Look here in the scripture, it really blesses my soul. Verse 14, because he had set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. It's the love of the Lord. The more you fall in love with the Lord, the more you want the Lord, the more you're filled with the spirit of the Lord, the easier it is to get deliverance from unclean spirits or whether it's in the flesh or if it's in the, in the natural or spirit, demonic spirit. And the, I'm trying not to make it too long, but 
Turn with me to Samuel 16. Let's look at Samuel and Saul. Samuel is the prophet, Saul is the king. Chapter 16, verse 13. Samuel took a horn of oil and he anointed him in the midst of the brethren. Saul was anointed, but he lost the anointing. It was as though he wasn't anointed. Verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Now, I'll, I'll say this. I do not believe that a born-again believer filled with the spirit of God can be demon-possessed, but they can be demon-influenced. Freedom from the influence. So when the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, the door was open to be attacked by evil spirits. Now we're going to see in the scripture where it said God sent the spirit, God sent the demon. I don't want to argue with people about this, but I can tell you this. A lot of things that bad happen to people I don't think it's necessary that God did it, but I think what happens when we get out of the covering and protection from God, we're opening up ourselves to be attacked by bad things to happen. All right, let's look on a little bit more. Verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So here's what happens. So go to paraphrase this. You can read this on your own. Saul's servant said, hey, you know, I know this guy that plays a harp, a little kid named David. He's really good at it. When he plays the harp, you can feel the presence of the Lord come. You need to talk to his father, see if he can come and play this harp for you. David come. When David played the harp, the anointing of the Lord was there. And the unclean spirit left. But when David stopped playing, it came back because it wasn't cast out. <laughs> uh, don't get upset with me, but it's kind of like a lot of time in church services. A lot of times they have praise and worship in the beginning, and it calms down a lot of spirits and a lot of attitudes there to open people up to receive the word of God. But if they don't receive the word of God, be filled with the word of God, when they leave, nothing has changed. It just comes back. The point I'm trying to make is you don't necessarily have to have a bona fide deliverance screaming at devils to come out in the name of Jesus. I don't want you to be afraid of the idea of the thought that it could be a spirit. Maybe it could be taken any of Let's all say this prayer together. Just say, Lord, I take authority over every spirit contrary to the Holy Spirit that would try to attack me or influence me in a wrong way. I don't want that thing. I don't want to think that way. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to act that way. In the name of Jesus, go. Let's turn to James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit thyself therefore unto God, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. A lot of people are trying to resist the devil, and he ain't going nowhere, because they haven't first submitted themselves unto God. Repentance, confession, forgiveness, doing what the Bible says to do. And as we submit ourselves unto God, then when we resist the devil, he will flee. So we're going to go a little bit further. We're not going to make this much longer. The point being is it can be a spirit. And saying that, I don't want anybody missing the rest of it because you don't believe in the spirit world, or if you don't believe Christians can have a spirit, just call it what you want. Call it a nasty thing, whatever you want. But if we know it's a spirit and we know what we're dealing with, then if it's affecting us, we know how to get rid of it. We know how to get prayer for it. We know how to pray for others with it. Or we need to protect ourselves from somebody 
that's operating in that spirit. We're going to go on a little bit further. Again, while we're going further, we're not trying to hate people. We're trying to hate evil. We hate the bad, but we love the person. And through love, and through patience, and through forgiveness, maybe they can get help, because we're so in mercy, we'll get mercy. If they don't want the help, and if they don't want to change, we can learn how to protect ourselves. And as we're waiting on the Lord, and as we do it with the right heart, with the right motive, right spirit, God's going to bless you. The key is don't be in bondage. And by that happen where you thought, when you thought, how you thought, with who you thought. But though it tarry, God's word is yea and amen. So we already prayed. We bound up everything that is not of God. And now let's forgive. Open up our eyes of understanding. Lord, if we're acting that way, we don't want to act that way. Show us what to. If it's in the flesh, help us crucify the flesh. And let's receive the peace of Jesus. And now just say this prayer to me. This is the best inner healing prayer that I know. Just say, Lord, fill me now. Every void, every gap, every vacancy with your peace that pass it all understanding. All right, we're going to go further. Don't get bitter. Let's get better. And as we do, we'll have the victory. And no matter what bad comes to you, good can happen to you. All right, we're out of time. Uh, if you got an instructor showing you the video, he'll give you some instruction. But I hope and I want to see you. Oh, I think it's on part three. I'm going to talk about the religious spirit. I will right, we'll see you there. Say amen.